up everybody, it's your girl Megan, show up fitness instructor, and today I'm going to be going over our eight core patterns along with the agnus and synergist muscles of those movements. If you're trying to pass our level one, you're going to need to know this information along with the 17 muscles of the shoulder, 20 muscles around the hip, and how to properly program for a client. Now if you're tuning in for your first time, I'm also our online instructor for our past NASA course. Thanks to the help of our study guide and weekly Zoom calls, we've been able to help over 2,800 people pass this thing. So if you're trying to do so, go ahead, comment below, message me, I can get you to pass this thing. But afterwards, one of the most common things that we find that people have when they pass it is that they still don't know how to program. So if you're following along, our eight patterns, anatomy, agnus, synergous muscles along with it will make programming so much easier. So let's get to it. First pattern we're gonna go over is a horizontal push. So we're doing a horizontal push to action here is horizontal adduction. Agnus muscle working is going to be your pec major. Synergist, you'll see your anterior deltoid. Thanks to extension at the elbow, you'll have your triceps involved. And the backside, looking at the scapulas, come off protraction involving your serratus and your pec minor. Next one, we have horizontal pull. So antagonistic of that horizontal push. Exact opposite, we're going to have horizontal abduction. Obviously, depending on grip, if it's pronated like this, it's going to be more mid back. Versus if it's neutral grip like this, it's going to need more lats. So either way, with extension or horizontal abduction, you're going to have your lats and posterior deltoid as the agnus movers there. Of course, once again, we're tapping at the elbow, you have flexion, so your biceps, and then at the back side of it, retraction, so you're going to have your rhomboids and your mid traps. Next, we're going to go vertical. So vertical push, going overhead, once again, depending on hand placement, pronated, neutral based on the different planes. So I have a flexion here versus abduction there. You're gonna have your agnus muscles being your anterior deltoid, medial deltoid. What's happening here at the elbow, we have extension, so once again, your triceps. And then when you look at the scapulas, you're going to upwardly rotate, which is gonna recruit your upper traps, lower traps, and your serratus anterior. Vertical push, let's move on to a vertical pull. Most commonly, you're gonna see a chin up, once again, let's this grip, open up, palms, it's going to be supinated, supinated grip here. It's going to be more extension versus a pronated grip. When I'm doing a pull-up, it's going to be adduction. Either way, agnus muscle is going to be your lats. Looking at the elbow still, you're going to have your biceps. And then when you look at the scapulas on the back, you're going to have downward rotation. This one's a tricky one. It's going to include your levator scapula, your pec minor, as well as your rhomboids. Now, if you want to know the reason or why a chin-up may be considered easier to do than a pull-up, go ahead and check out my other YouTube describing more in detail the difference between those two. But let's move on to the next one. That was upper body. Let's go to our lower body patterns. So the next one we have is going to be squats. Squats is obviously going to depend on your starting position, but more often than not, it's predominantly a knee-dominant exercise. So when I'm coming up, I have a lot of knee extension and involve the quads. What are the four quads? If you're taking level one, you need to know. Outside, vastus lateralis. Inside, vastus medialis. Underneath the rectus femoris on top is going to be your vastus intermedius. Of course, the extension, your octagon hip extension, so you have your glutes. Big eye in the back, glute max. On the side, glute mean. Move that, mean your glute min. And of course, guess what? It's not your hamstrings. Now it's say that. It's going to be your adductors on the inside. They're going to help the synergist of the squat movement. You want to be a little bit more specific, it's your adductor magnus, the big guy, the posterior side of it. So that's for squat. Remember, squats traditionally more knee dominant exercise. When we go to a hinge pattern, it's going to be more of a hip dominant exercise. So when I come here, I go down, I have hip extension. Once again, we're going to increase or involve those glutes. You'll have your hamstrings. What are those three hamstrings? You've got biceps more, so it's lateral, and your semi, semi membranosis and semi tendon. And of course, you have your erectus spinae on the back side, as well as a synergist. Next one, we're going to have unilateral. So this one is sometimes harder for people to understand. Just know when we're doing a front lunge, it's going to be more quad dominant, versus when we do a reverse lunge, it's going to be more glute dominant. Why is that? We're going to look at shin versus torso angle. So when we come to the side here, it might be easier to see, but if my shin angle is greater than my torso angle, more quad, why? More knee extension. Versus if my torso angle is greater than my shin angle, more glutes 
Y, more hip extension. And of course, you have 50 50 if the angles are equal.